Hello there. My name is Aidan O'Sullivan. I'm an archaeologist in University College Dublin. And for the next three or four minutes, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what we do at the UCD Centre for Experimental Archaeology and Material Culture. First of all, what is experimental archaeology? It's the reconstruction of past buildings, technologies and things based on archaeological evidence uh, uh, and their investigation and recording as analogies to try and understand uh, what things were like in the past. So we will excavate an archaeological house, you know, on, a, on an archaeological site, uh, an ancient house, and we will recover evidence from that. And what we do at UCD is we try and rebuild one of those buildings uh, to see how it would have worked in terms of architecture uh, and also how you could have used it in various different ways. That's essentially what experimental archaeology is. We make things today as they were made in the past so that we get a better understanding of them. UCD has uh, a Centre for Experimental Archaeology and Material Culture, uh, and it is one of the only universities in the world with a facility like this for experimental archaeological research, teaching and, and uh, public engagement. Uh, we create researchers, we do research projects, we do various things like, as we shall see, investigate ancient houses, we investigate past technologies, we make things of all kinds of raw materials, and we try and understand how people made things in the past. Uh, the things that we find in archaeological digs. So we reconstruct prehistoric and medieval houses. This is an early medieval house uh, that we built here in UCD and also some uh, uh, Mesolithic hunter-gatherer houses and also a Bronze Age house that we're building at the moment. So we build those houses, we try and understand the architecture and then when we have them built we try and understand what it would be like to live inside them. We make and we fire and we use pottery to understand how it was done in the past. These are all our students making pottery. And we can, you can see we're firing it there in, in, a, in a bonfire. Um, we make things out of flint and stone, like those from prehistoric times. Uh, um, and that can be a flint blade, which is hafted in moss, as you can see there on the left. Or it can be a rotary quern, which is used for grinding grain in the Middle Ages. We investigate ancient food technologies. So we built a, a medieval bread oven um, at the Centre for Experimental Archaeology and Material Culture. And we use that to try and understand medieval baking technologies. Or we just make and use pottery uh, to make various different types of, of uh, stews and, and soups and so on. Um, uh, and of course, what we're actually interested in is how did people do it in the past? Um, our archaeology students learn how to cast bronze and work with non-ferrous metals, so silver, gold, brass, uh, um, uh, pewter and other metals like that. So here is an example of one of our students has been casting bronze axes. These are the types of axes that would have been used 4,000 years ago in Ireland. Um, and so we have evidence for these axes on archaeological sites, but we're trying to figure out how were they made. So that's what we do as experimental archaeologists. We do iron smelting and blacksmithing, and we use scientific techniques to try and understand uh, metallography in the past. Uh, so we make things out of iron, but we'll take it all the way. We actually get natural bog ores. We uh, smelt it in furnaces, as you can see there, like those young women are doing. You haul the iron bloom out of the furnace at a critical time, and you consolidate it with mallets, and then eventually you end up using it to smith or to, to, to make things uh, out of iron. We investigate how people made glass and glass beads in the past, such as here in these examples. We explore prehistoric and historic woodcrafts. Here's one of our students who has made a pole aid and is using it to make a medieval bowl, as people would have done back in the Middle Ages. Um, we investigate textiles and technologies. This is one of our PhD students showing our students how to make cloth using medieval technology. Um, we investigate uh, the making of things out of bone and antler in the past. So, for example, two examples here. Uh, one of our students here is drilling uh, holes in, in a plate of bone to make a bone comb, which is a type of combs that people would have used in the past. And another one of our students made these dice out of bone. But a, a funny thing about some dice that we find in the archaeological record is that they were weighted so that they will always fall on the one number that the, the gambler wants to, to make. They're basically for cheating. Um, so what she did was she made a lot of weighted dice like this, cheater's dice, um, and carried out various different statistic analysis to show how they might have worked. We process hides uh, and under, uh, to, so as to understand leather working in the past. So this is a red deer hide from red deer in the Wicklow Mountains, which has been processed and ultimately it'll find its way to becoming uh, leather. So this is one of our French students actually making a leather shield from the Iron Age. We uh, reconstruct 
buildings and structures. This is our students coming together to rebuild an original Bronze Age cyst, which was excavated in County Westmead. And we got the stones at the Centre for Experimental Archaeology and we re rebuilt it exactly the way they would have done in the past. And we found that our students were able to haul very heavy, heavy rocks uh, that were used in the making of this Bronze Age burial cyst uh, relatively easy using ropes. Um, we also are able to train our students in how to do archaeological excavation. This is uh, only last week when we were actually doing excavations on our site. We had an early medieval house that was that was on the Centre for Experimental Archaeology and it got burnt down in a fire about two years ago. Um, but as archaeologists, we took the opportunity to say, oh, well, good. Let's have a look and see what houses look like when they're burnt down um, so that we can better understand the archaeological record. We do an awful lot of public engagement. We have uh, public, uh, public groups come to visit the site. We have uh, school children come and visit. You might even mention it to your teacher if you like that, that this might be something you might like to do someday. So in the end, what's experimental archaeology? It's about making. Experimental archaeology helps us, helps us to think practically through our hands, our eyes, our smell, our hearing, our touch about how people made things in the past. And it provokes new questions and, and genuine insights about the archaeological record. Understanding, it helps us to create a better scientific and experiential understanding of buildings, technologies, things and practices in the past, and, and enables us as archaeologists to understand the archaeological record better. And finally, we use storytelling. We use archaeological evidence, historical sources, and experimental archaeology to tell stories that are just that bit more interesting. 